Hi, this is Jim Snell in the United States of America. Today's video is about basic maintenance on the TRS-1, followed by a nice slideshow, photos from all around the world. Enjoy. Okay, let's start with the right side of the engine. There's some filler ports and drain ports. First one circled in red is your drain for your cooling system. Drains the water pump, cylinder, cylinder head, radiator, everything. Little arrow cast on the side of the cover to tell you. When you take that bolt out, there's a copper washer behind it. Drains your entire cooling system. This one here is just your oil level. You take that out if your bike is standing straight upright, that would be how high the gearbox oil would be. You can fill there if you lay the bike on the side. This is the transmission check ball, not a drain plug. That is also a drain plug. On the top of the engine, on the left hand side below the intake manifold is a port. This is a filler port to put oil into the gearbox. Very easy to put a funnel in there. This is how I do it. And under the shifter on the left hand side is a drain port, the one I prefer to use. And I made this little oil drain piece from a license plate. Keeps the oil from getting on the on the engine protector bash plate. You can see here how easy it is. It slides under there and, and the oil just drains right out into my bucket. We're going to remove the fuel tank and air filter box and I'm going to show you how easy all of this is to to work on there are two allen bolts at the back of the fuel tank and the fuel tank doesn't sit on the chassis it sits on rubber mounts on the front is a 10 millimeter nylock nut take it off with a nut driver unplug the vent hose lift the tank unplug the fuel line and it is that simple of course be sure you have the tank valve turned off this is an air box assembly, and Jordy here showing you how flexible his rear mudguard is. He's very proud of the design of this bike. Worked on it two years. Hands-on guy Jordy is. He can be found in the factory every day. We'll loosen the hose clamp at the back of the carburetor where it connects with the air box intake hose. Four countersunk Allen bolts. I'm using a power tool here to take them out, but I always prefer to put them in by hand. You don't want to cross thread or over tighten using power tools. They can speed your work to take things apart, but I like to put things together by hand. And the air box comes off very easily and you don't have to wrestle with it or anything. It just comes off. There's plenty of clearance in there for the intake tube. Looking at a front view here. On the bottom is a water drain flap, typical in the industry. The top lid to access the filter. One countersunk allen same as the kind that holds the airbox to the chassis a couple of little hooks on the back there you can see down inside the filters retention spring etc filters twin air very high quality sits on an oval cage very easy to put your hand down in there in the airbox to remove the filter you just grasp it and pull back a little bit against the spring and pull up on it and it comes right out that's the spring that holds tension on the filter. The cage is oval, so the long side points up or down. You can see here what it looks like without the filter all installed. See the lip that it sits over? To reinstall the filter, you just squish it and feel that you have the, the narrow side on pointing left and right and the long side up and down. Little button there on the grommet guides down through the center of that spring. You, Pull back lightly on the spring as you're pressing down. You can feel the filter fall into place over the little lip, the sealing lip that's in there around the hole. There's a little ratcheting door at the intake opening where the air goes into the air box that you can close it up to almost a 50% restriction of the opening. Air box, very easy to put back on, just as easy it was as it was to take off. You just do it and very easy to align the rubber intake hose to the carburetor. In fact, when I was shooting this, it went on perfectly. 
And uh, I like to put my bolts in and get them all started before tightening anything. Then I run back around again and, and tighten all the bolts after they've all been started. And don't forget that when you've put your air box back on, and, and these just need to be kind of snug, don't over tighten these. Don't forget, you need to verify the connection at the back of your carburetor, look at it closely, and align that clamp nicely, and put that, tighten that clamp back up again. The fuel tank goes on very easily, just plug in the fuel line, and like I said, it sits down on some rubber mounts and very easy to put the bolts in. You don't have to search for the holes. They're right there and, and everything lines up nicely. Very nice design here, fit and finish. Very easy to work on these bikes. And, you know, I know I represent the brand. I've said it before, but I'm impressed. I really don't find anything about the bike frustrating to work on. Finish tightening up the tank bolts and put the vent hose on there and we're done. Don't forget to turn on your gas valve. The tank sits on those two rubber brackets there, little mounts. That's the rear brake reservoir. Looking around under the hood, we have the spark plug here. And very easy to find. I get mine at my local auto parts store. There's the cooling fan motor, the CDI box for the ignition. That's the 12 volt DC rectifier that converts the AC coming from the stator magneto to DC to run the cooling fan. Another view. We'll go around here and, and look down in here around where the ignition components are. This is the plug in for the stator magneto. If you have to take it off, you just unplug it right there. And then the coil is there. Coil wire goes up to the spark plug cap. Very easy to understand. It's all right there in front of you. Very easy to change the spark plug on this bike. Very easily accessible with the fuel tank on even. The water in the cooling system comes up through the cylinder and the cylinder head down through that hose into the radiator, rises into the radiator, drops over the other side, comes back down out this hose directly into the water pump. The water pump pushes it through a passageway in the engine back into the bottom of the cylinder and back up through the cylinder head. And repeat, there are no magnesium parts in the engine, no galvanic corrosion. One bolt and the radiator tilts forward. There's the radiator cap I'm pointing to. It's an Allen, very easy to access. There is a bleeder on the top of the cylinder head. If you refill the radiator, you need to make sure there's no air in your cooling system. You take that bolt out as you're pouring the water in, and then when the water begins to come out, you put the bolt back in. Rear suspension, swing arm, and rear brake, just an overview. Very easy to take the shock and linkage out of the chassis, work on it on the workbench. The rear linkage bearings are all the same. The bushings are all the same. Very straightforward design, and this is what the pieces look like. Some different views, needle bearings with seals, very nicely done there. Shock is a R16V racing shock. This is the top shock mount in the chassis. Bottom one, a linkage mount in the bottom side of the swing arm. Swing arm pivots on needle bearings. You can see them clearly, nice ones. Chain tensioner, very nice design, bottom view, side view, sprocket protector. You can take the kickstand off the bike if you so desire, very easily. Rear brake, your typical brake tech model. And the rotor, you may be familiar with these designs. The wheel adjusters are incredibly well thought out. The rear brake master cylinder, your typical brake tech. Close up of the wheel adjuster, nice, like an enduro bike. Engine protector plate, it's interesting. It's thicker than the industry standards. Has a huge chemical resistant rubber cushion and a nice big gap between the engine and the plate so you don't have to worry about the bottom of your engine. Skid plate has the usual bends, but the bends are sharply done so as to make the plate even stronger. Attaches at the rear with the bolts, but not flat. They go up at an angle. Steering stem and bearings are very strong, large diameter stem. 
biggest in the industry. They grease everything on these bikes when they assemble them. Very nice how the top triple tree bolt is tapered, goes down in there, ensures perfect alignment. You don't have to fight it to put it together. Thank you for watching, and here we have a nice photo gallery. Enjoy.